Now, when we look at um, paneling tools in Grasshopper, we'll see that we have, um, for instance, our own tab. And that tab has quite a few sub-tabs. Um, we do have some utility objects in here that um, just add functionality um, to some of the existing uh, Grasshopper tools. We have um, curve division. We have ways of creating grids, have ways of modulating those grids, utilities that we might need to um, do or perform on our grid, ways of paneling things which are 2D, and ways to panel things which are 3D. There are also panel utilities and ways to um, bring grids in from uh, Rhino as well as baking grids out of um, paneling tools. So then, let's go ahead and create a point in Rhino. Now I'm going to set my point right over here to the side of where I've been working. And with my layers open, I'm going to create a new layer, and this will be called my reference geometry. All of my geometry that I create, which um, I'm using as um, you know for referencing, um, will live in that layer. It just makes it a lot easier to be able to um, keep keep things nice and tidy. Now. As you know, in Grasshopper, there are two primary types of objects. There are things which are called containers, and there are things which are called constructors. The containers are the various objects which reference right, um, entities, singular entities, for use throughout your file. Those are all found in params. That's short for parameters. And if I go to geometry, I can find a point container right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and right-click and set one point and click on my point. Now, I get that update right here in Rhino indicating that this is um, now being displayed. Moving over to the Paneling Tools tab, we'll see that the grid, right, if we think about the process, we first start by referencing. The second, we create a grid. We can see that there are a number of grid objects, but the first one we're going to look at is this really simple one called planar grid. The planar grid object, um, you know, it's a little bit robust in terms of uh, what it needs, or I guess it's a little bit over the top what it needs for its inputs. Um, I mean, I guess it's a good thing because you can get really specific, um, but it might be a little bit daunting whenever you first um, drop a few of these down on the uh, canvas. But um, if you mouse over, it asks you, where do you want that grid to start? We have, what is the direction for our row and our column? What are the distances between rows and columns? And then how many uh, rows and columns would you like to have? So this right here, it asks for the base point. So I'm going to just give this a name. Now, I have my grasshopper set up so that in display I'm drawing my icons here and what I you know I like to do that because um, the icons are, are really well done David does an excellent job and in this case Raja does an ex excellent job um, to ensure that the icons communicate um, what the, the the kind of intended use is of a uh, of an object now with that I can't give this a name anymore. So if I change the name of this to base point, it doesn't show up, even though if I mouse over, it does. So one thing I like to do is select the object and just go to edit, group. Now by doing that, you'll notice that you can now give this a name and the name will show up vis-a-vis -vis the surrounding group. Connecting this over to the input here, 
You can see that my grid has now updated. And now I need to start walking through and creating all of the various inputs that I need to define. So by default, the uh, row and the column are already um, specified. So we can skip past those. But what we want to do is get over here to the distance between rows and columns and interface with that somehow, probably using something like slider. Now, you can type in slider by double clicking in the canvas. And you can also do something really nice like this, one less than 2.0 less than 4. And a slider will be created with the range already set or the domain already set. So let's try that again. I'm going to double click and I'm going to say 1 less than 2.0 less than 4. And that slider will be created. Now I'm going to call this row spacing. I'm going to copy and paste and call that column spacing and connect them. Now as I'm doing that, you'll see that this updates. And if I change this, right, you'll see that this will update as well. Lastly, we need to define how many rows and columns we'd like to have. So I'll call this my row count. Need to have at least one and my column count. Now, if you notice, one by one does not look much like a grid. So if we change our minimum to two by two, you'll see that with the grid, you need a minimum of two points in both direction in order to establish the unit of one here. Now, as you move up, it's fine. You can say, you know, three columns, right, or three rows, four columns, etc. cetera. Um, but you have to have a minimum of two in order for this to, to work. So this guy right here, our planar grid, if I say edit group, I can just say planar grid, right? But it's very important to understand that this is a P T planar grid. This is a paneling tools planar grid, which is a very specific kind of grid. So let's take a look at how that is. Now, taking a look at the output of this grid using the panel here, you can see that it has, for instance, a series of points collection of points, right? But you don't see that there's anything really special about these points um, in this view. And it's really not until you get over to um, Rhino and start to check some of the properties of these points will you actually see that the, uh, that the uh, points have additional data um, assigned to them. 